one. Hi, you are watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our channels and networks. I'm Mike Morales here in the heartbeat of Southern California. That young man out there is Jim Johnston in Northeast Ohio. Jim and I have finally gone through the entire the entire portfolio of Cutwater Spirits. And this is the brand new Cutwater Añejo. And I got to tell you, I, I've been holding on to mine for a long time. I, I, um, we've been waiting for them to get it out to Jim. Um, but I will tell you that this, this looks completely different from, from the first two. We've done, the, we've tasted the Blanco, loved it. The Reposado, solid. And now this is their Añejo. And that completes the line. We we even tasted if you if you haven't seen it yet, the cut water um, tequila and soda, which yeah it was uh, it was all right it was okay. I, I think they could have done better because they the, the blanco is stellar, and we'll tell you why the blanco is stellar. If you haven't seen those those videos those reviews, we'll tell you why in a minute. But we're going to taste this first. We're going to pour it in our glass and then tell you all the ins and outs. We broke the seal off camera here because. We didn't want to fight with the. Uh, yeah, it was oh. pretty. That was pretty uh, intense packaging on the top area. Yeah, it was. Um, that's pretty intense nose too. What is that? Your what is that? I am picking up there. Uh, I'm gonna smell it out of the glass. I'm using a Glen Cairn. It's it. It actually looks a lot darker in the bottle than it does in the glass. Um, I think. Maybe it, maybe it's the label that's playing tricks on me. But anyway, I'm using a Glencairn. Um, I got I'm waiting for it to get give me some legs and tears. It's kind of a uh, I won't even say it's pale straw. It's more like a like a pale gold. Yeah. There you go. Runny legs and tears. It's okay. Uh, I think their Blanco reacted the same way. They're 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 not. They're sticking to their process, and and we'll let you know why in a second. We'll tell you what distillery is coming out of. If you're not familiar with with Cutwater, they are a um, micro distiller uh, based in San Diego County, but they they not only make their own vodka and gin, and and they're going they're going big time commercial, um, because they can. Yeah, nice, nice, nice string of pearls um but their blanco is some of the micro distillers uh, throughout the united states instead of making their own agave spirit like a western reserve that you and i did some of them you know the, some, the only other option for some of these people is to go to a distillery and use their facility and make a tequila that they would that represents their brand um isha tequila does that in la um uh, they do it. They're called Green Bar, Green Bar uh, Distillery in Los Angeles, and they're they're an organic. Everything they do is very similar to Western Reserve. Everything that comes out of there is organic, so they make an organic tequila. This is not um, this one from Cutwater. They're making big splashes right now. Cutwater, you, they're getting a lot of press. Uh, they're entering a lot of contests. Um, the quality's there when it comes to their tequila, so. I don't expect anything less, but there was a, there was a lot of barrel in that in the, the initial smell when we popped the cork on these. That was what I was and getting. They used their own whiskey barrels, and that is exactly what I was getting. Which they probably have a corn mash whiskey that gives this a little bit of that sweet smoke, and, and I'm picking up a lot of barrel char from it from yeah. the initial nose. Not so much here, but when I pop that bottle open, you get that first whiff. And it's got some decent legs and tears. It's it not. It's clingy, but not runny. It's it's. Ooh, it's got some decent vis viscosity on it. So I'm I'm impressed right now. Just looking at it. What did they say the age? They age. How long is it aged? For a year in their own whiskey barrels. Okay. So this is this will be representative of their their own whiskey. Cutwater whiskey. What I'm not even sure. I've ever had or seen. I need to go visit them. I gotta do a. I gotta. Maybe they'll. Maybe they'll let me go film something. Yeah. Once it's safe to travel. 
<laughs> After I get my second shot. This has got sweet corn and barrel char for me at the beginning, and that's a whiskey characteristic that I'm picking up. I'm used to it, but then it 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 goes into a a um, pepper and anise, a, a little menthol for me again. It, it's got a little bit of, there's a little bit of alcohol though on this one. You know what, it, it's reminiscent to me, you know how you and I did the, the Doors, the, the special release with the, with the um, Asian Illegal barrels? It's, it's, it's got that light scotch thing going on for me. And I'm not, again, that's not my forte, so that was the one you and I did. Yeah. Yeah, I think the barrel char is giving it a little bit of that smoked sweet pepper aroma that, that kind of, it comes off as anise and menthol because the smoke smells like, it doesn't smell like smoke because it's been masked by alcohol and floral sweetness. It's like lighting clover on fire almost and then trying to smell the smoke, but it's, it's there. This is definitely picking up barrel characteristics. Yeah. Now, I've never had the whiskey, but I can just tell from the nose, you're not going to get this from, from a, a very um, multiple-use bourbon barrel. Yeah, no, no. It's, uh, it's Nice, it's, though. Very nice nose. Pleasant. Yes. It's, uh, it's very much going to reflect their, it's, it's, it's their, their signature flavor profile and aroma. I'm betting. I mean, you've you've just dissected their whiskey. We've not even had it yet, so you know. I like it. I, I like I say, it reminds me a little bit about the the do the Scotch, the, the the doers that you and I had. Now, I'm I'm not getting enough agave though. I know their blanco is very substantial, and um, but you're right, it's very barrel forward on this one. Right. Yeah, and there's a little bit of alcohol down in the center for me. There's not a whole lot, but it's there. Yeah, the the the, the just the hint of char smoke and the alcohol kind of come off as just a menthol for a little bit, but then I that sweetness kind of masks it, and then it's just kind of a little sweet, peppery, smoky. It's light. I, I mean, I, there I you like. Go. Yeah. Well, let's dive in, man. Let's see what we got. Oh my. Oh my. This has wow. got a nice whiskey caramel component to it that yes. really gives it a nice mellow kind of it, it it's not a bite, but it's just it's like it's like whiskey burn that that part of the flavor comes from the burn it, it accentuates the the spice and the baked sugars and and the char from the barrel and and i think that's got it in here i think that's translated into the agave here well i i'm enjoying it because it's got a very long finish oh yeah uh that oh, that's yeah. a that's a warm fuzzy you know what's interesting is that this is a substantial Añejo for the age that it's actually in it because it's, it's reacting like it's been aged longer And then on the palate all the barrel notes are still there. You're right. There's a yeah. that smoky barrel um, It lingers it this just keeps giving and giving and giving man There's a little bit of char. There's a little bit of caramelized sugar a little little hint of vanilla and in the front if you hold it in the front of your mouth, you don't get any of that spice. I got vanilla sweetness, a little agave hint, and just a little bit of a little bit of mild pepper to kind of complement the sweetness. But then when you swallow it and take it take it all the way down, nice long finish, warm finish, and and all of the whiskey barrel characteristics, the 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 caramelized sugar and the spice and the and the alcohol kind of just give it a nice it's just robust at the end yeah um i'm i'm really surprised um i didn't know what to expect because uh 
the ripple solo was kind of well the ripple solo was was just the edges were rounded off from the blanco the blanco is very bold uh, really enjoyed the Blanco, and that's why we were hoping that the, the soda, the tequila and soda, would, would be more substantial, but it, it really wasn't. But this one, this one, this one really reacts. Like I said, the only one I, you and I have ever had together was, was the Dewar's, and that was, that's a scotch that's aged in illegal barrels in mezcal, and you could really pick out the mezcal uh, from that one. But this one, Wow, makes me want to try their whiskey. I'll tell you what, this is a bourbon drinker's tequila. Yeah. Because yeah. That, that barrel influence gives it the kind of, um, gives it, it imparts a little bit of spice where you would just have kind of like a sweet baking spice. This gives the spice a little bit more kick, but you still have that sweetness from, from the whiskey out of the barrel. That that gives it that nice kind of caramelized vanilla spice. It's like a this is like a really really nice spice cake. Or you know, did anybody's grandfather smoke those uh, pipe tobacco that had that kind of vanilla smoke oh, flavor yeah, to yeah. it? That it's just a pleasant aroma of 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 cooked vanilla and and sugar. You know, it reminds me too when you were talking about cigars. I don't know if you've ever tried these. I'm trying to remember the name of them. Uh, some one one friend of mine turned me on to the backwoods, the backwoods uh, c- cigars that look like a, they come in, they come in pouches. They're they're dirt cheap. You can get them at any store, and they're they're they taste like they're dipped in vanilla, um, and they come in a light in a dark wrapper. And somebody said somebody used to call them. There's a friend of mine used to call them um, Clint Eastwoods. Because they look like the 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 cheap self roll cigar that Clint Eastwood would smoke and his spaghetti. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Okay, so that's what it's called backwoods cigars. But this reminds me of a, a good backwoods cigar with, with the sweet Connecticut wrapper. You know. Um, yeah, that not, sweetness is definitely there. Yeah, but but, but it's such a mild and, and and good way that the the char and the, and the the caramelization and that little hint of smoke off the char. Just makes it very nice. I would probably smoke this, a uh, smoke a cigar with this. I don't know, maybe I wouldn't go as far as going with a Maduro, but no, you know, uh, um, you would probably match it with a Connecticut wrapper, something something light, you know, a light. It, it, it would either be a Connecticut wrapper or or a medium bodied Habano. Oh, okay. For those of you who can get those. <laughs> Or even, you know, there's some good ones. Uh, uh, I, I kind of lean toward uh, Romeo and Julieta sometimes, uh, Mexican uh, cigars. Mexi- they, some of these are available or made in Mexico. They actually make great cigars in Mexico. People don't know that. but well, uh, That's actually another. I, I'd probably do like a Mexican San Andres wrapper uh, on this with, with a little bit more. Some of the Mexican wrappers get a little bit more of like a, a, a cocoa espresso spice that i think would go great with the vanilla spice yeah of this would be really good so maybe a rocky patel sun-grown oh. or, or uh, uh but but i think you could really pair this well because it just it sips so nicely it's 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 robust but it's not overpowering in any way so um since we're since we're pairing right now we're actually helping you pair this cigars right. desserts not with a, I wouldn't go with a flan. I would go with a tiramisu. What about you? Tiramisu would do it. You know, actually, anything that had um, anything that had a coffee flavor, I think, would go great with this. This is something you could probably put into a an espresso martini made with anejo tequila, oh. and really get that that you know you 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 pair uh, it, 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 that almost evokes like a mocha flavor if you put this with coffee. Yeah. I, I that nice kind of sweet but but a little bit robust uh cocoa flavor behind uh the coffee that this has just got a nice um it just picks up a lot of components of the barrel that sometimes get over exaggerated sometimes right or they don't show up i i think whatever they're doing with their whiskey the barrel matches up with their tequila pretty well because it imparts a, a just a natural kind of smoky sweetness to that I, I think is great. Yeah, well, that's you know again we talked about um, 
we've had their tequila and soda and, and it starts out with a, if you haven't had cut water blanco you need to get it um because it's it it's really just excellent robust and so i expected more from the tequila soda we didn't get it because we already had had the blanco knowing that that would be the base and it didn't translate it's something going on with that and i'm not sure what but the rest of this tequila line is stellar and and let me get to the ins and outs so that you folks know where this is coming from if you haven't seen the other two reviews go check them out they, they've been uh, uh, rolling these uh, these expressions out slowly so we've not gotten them all at once which is okay right. Uh, you know, considering that they're a micro distiller to begin with, although a well-funded micro distiller, um, this is coming out of uh, Nome eleven ten one 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 zero. That's Tequila Orandine. If that name is familiar to you, it should be. Uh, you get some great tequilas coming out of there. Puerto Vallarta, one of one of the ones that is so underrated as a as a as a value tequila. Uh, Orandine Oitas, one of my favorites. Um, uh, Gran Orandine, which is again one of my favorites. Suavecito, the new version of Suavecito, Suavecito is coming out of there. Um, Cutwater, of course. So there are several brands that come out of that. It is an Orandine um, a distillery, so it's not it's not a big major maquila loda because it doesn't need to be. Their tequilas are legendary, legendary. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, I don't know if you're on their website. Do we know what a price point is on this? And, and is it even available in Ohio? It no. Should. No. <laughs> he, that's his standard answer. No. <laughs> and even even his it's, standard inflection of his voice. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I have a fifty dollar price point all the way up to one hundred and twenty five. Unfortunately, we're the the result of COVID is that there are delivery fees on almost every price model where you can get something online here or use like a driz, uh what is it drizzly that 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 drizzly. service yes but so the prices are um skewed but looking at Yeah, about 50. 49.99, maybe 55. Well, again, it's worth it. I, I think it's very well done. Uh, considering where it comes from, let me read you on the back of the label. It tells you what their process is. Okay, here we go. Uh, blue agave, 100% uh, blue agave, is slow cooked in traditional brick ovens, open fermented, that means open fermentation, uh, and double distilled in alambique stills made of stainless steel and copper. So that explains why the flavor profile is so bold in the Blanco and translates all the way through. Um, the spirit is then rested in cut water whiskey barrels that we ship to Jalisco from our San Diego distillery. After aging for over a year, our Añejo emerges with a rich amber hue. Okay, that's the color I was looking for, amber. And complex notes of oak, caramel, and bourbon vanilla. Bourbon vanilla. There's one I've not heard before. That sweet whiskey flavor that comes off of that corn base in the whiskey. Uh, it says it is then bottled in Jalisco, and its labels features the hand-drawn skull of a rayador, black skimmer seabird. So that's what a rayador is. I had no idea what rayador was. I never even bothered to look. I thought it meant lightning because lightning is a rayo. Uh, but it's Rayador Black Skimmer Seabird. Inspired by classic Mexican folk imagery, the illustration also serves as a nod to the Cutwater name. Wow. Wow. I, I love this tequila. I love this Añejo. Really nice. It's, it's you know, we've run the gamut. It, it, it is not only a, a great sipper, but you could pair this with something. I didn't even think to pair it with anything because I thought it was so bold that it it would just stand on its own. But you even put it in a cocktail. I mean, in, in your descriptions, which I would never have thought of because, I, I, you know, something like this is to me pair with a d dessert or a, or a cigar for sure. But then to put it in a cocktail, that would stand up, you know. Um, 
and actually just thinking about it there's a there's a a, a a scotch a famous scotch cocktail the rusty nail which is just scotch and drambuie which is a scotch derived liqueur but i i think a rusty nail with this that 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 kind of honey heather flavor the drambuie would do really well with this and you could kind of liven this up i would absolutely sip this by itself though yeah oh yeah but you know a mexican rusty nail is not out of the question <laughs> no that's right that's right brand of promise nominee absolutely all unanimous this is you've been watching and listening to sipping off the cup on tequila aficionado media and all of our channels and networks don't forget cut wire cut water rayador and rayador is a bird okay i didn't i had no idea um but that you please whatever you do uh follow us on all of our social media and subscribe to our youtube channel give us a like you know hit the notification bell and whatever you do tomar sabiamente sip wisely <laughs>